and welcome back. So now I'm still trying to figure out how to um, do the hit signal thing here. So let's just uh... okay. Signal functionality, signal hit. Adding following to the top of the script. Do I? Maybe I do that in the node. Is that the node? Of course. How dumb of me. Alrighty, so that was just kind of dumb. We'd already. Okay, so now we're back where uh, I started from. Connect to hit signal. We want to make a new function named game over, which will handle what needs to happen when the game ends. Okay, so hit, connect, connect. Okay. Uh, make a new function named game over, which will handle Type game over in the method in node box at the bottom of connecting signal window. I should have done that already. So actually, let's do something here. Let's go ahead and delete this. In fact, let's delete this too. Somebody else can worry about. No, because I probably need, probably end up needing that right. Okay. Let's see if I can control Y, because sometimes there we go. That's good. All right. So let's do this again. Let's go to player. And let's go to. Let's uh, disconnect that, because I want to do what it said, which was connect. Um. Type game over in the method in node box. Game over. I see. Add the following code as well as a new game function to set everything up for a new game. Okay, so connect. Now function game over. We will do this whole score timer dot stop and mob timer dot stop and then we'll have a function that we call punk new game Oop. score equals zero player dot start Start position dot position. Okay. Start timer dot start. And Bob's your uncle. All right. Now, connect the timeout signal of each of the timer nodes to the main script. Start timer will start the other two timers. Score timer will increment the score by one. Okay, so. Each of the timer nodes. So, we're at signals. Timeout. Okay, connect. Okay. Start score and mob. Okay, connect. 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 Okay. Now. On 
start timer timeout. to the main script. Oh, no, it is in the main script, isn't it? Okay. So, start timer. Man. All right, we'll start this. I keep forgetting to start my, my timer up there. <laughs> function on start timer ob timer dot start score timer dot start score timer we're just going to do score plus equals one like so Oh, cancel. I probably just end up calling it main scene, but we'll we'll see here in just a second. And uh, I might even get this done today. Let's check it and see how many videos I've made so far. I'm on number three, right? Yeah. So on my fourth one, um, should be enough to completely finish this. I I hope. Um. On mob timer timeout, we will create a mob instance. We'll create a mob instance. Pick a random starting location along the path 2D and set the mob in motion. The path follow 2D node will automatically rotate as it follows the path, so we'll use that to select the mob's direction as well as position. Note the new instance must be added to the scene using add child. Now click on mob timer. Oh. Connect the six signal. I get it. Okay, so. And for those of you who don't know what I'm clicking on, um, I'm doing Brave Rewards, which the Brave browser has a deal where. Um, where they award you with their basic attention token or bats, whatever. And um, I, I can get that by just clicking on these ads. So I just figured, why not? You never know. And so now I've got, like, got a couple of bucks worth of BAT in there, I guess. Which is kind of cool, I guess. Anyways. Um, following code, a mob timer timeout now let's actually um we can control x and control v there we go um okay so it looks like we have a lot to type here choose okay so Choose a random location on path 2D. Okay. Mob path slash mob spawn location. I don't know what the these forward slashes are for. Mob path. Hmm, interesting. That set offset. Mob spawn location that set offset Randi Randy. Okay. Create a mob instance and add it to the scene. Okay. Bar mob equals mob dot instance. Add child mob and if you every once in a while you'll notice that um, uh, a 
supposed to be that. Okay. You'll notice I want to put some spaces in between parentheses because that's how I normally um, do stuff. And um, if it lets it do it, uh, I'll probably do that in the future. But right now I'm just typing in what they what they tell me to type, what the tutorial is telling me to type. So let's see how much more we can get. So we can get this function done before time runs out, right? Um, add child mob and set the mobs direction perpendicular to the path. So it's going to say direction. Direction. Right? Bar direction equals mob path slash mob spawn location that rotation plus pi divided by what divided by two okay set the mobs position to a random location okay mob that pause equals mob path slash that position add some randomness to the direction Add some randomness to the direction. Direction plus equals rand range negative pi divided by four pi divided by four mob dot rotation equals direction set the velocity. and direction this should be I guess capital pi because it's a constant okay gotcha mob that linear velocity equals vector 2 random range dot min speed and it's gonna be max speed also oh come on um mob dot max speed I have to go back there here comma zero okay and mob dot linear velocity again linear velocity equals mob dot linear velocity rotated direction direction like so errors don't look like any errors here okay important in functions requiring angles GD script uses radians not degrees if you're more comfortable working with degrees you'll need to use degree to rad rad to degree functions to convert between the two okay so I'm gonna call that a video and I'm gonna say thanks for watching that we're getting close now um, I'm not sure because of the HUD here. I'm not sure if I'll be able to finish in the next the next thing, but we'll see here. We'll see how fast I can get going here. 
So thanks for watching.